hello everyone welcome back again to my youtube channel in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how i went about the cutting and sewing of my detachable wedding dress train i'm going to be demonstrating this with this pink fabric as you can see so of course i cannot ha uh, afford to get like new fabrics to make a full wedding dress but i just use this little fabric i have here to demonstrate this whole process it's still the same thing all you have to do is to just follow the process for a longer version and you will definitely get it so if you're interested keep on watching and let us get started now for the materials you will need you would be needing any silk fabric that you decide to use for my own wedding dress i used um dutchess and i used about 30 yards then you will need to get crinoline to sew around the end of the train also you'll be needing a hard net i have just this little piece left You'll be needing about 15 yards of it because you will need to also cut it exactly the same way you have cut out your train. So you need a lot of the hard net. Also, you will need hem gum. I don't have it here. You will need hem gum as well to sew around the end of the train. So I'm just going to go ahead now and demonstrate the pattern drafting for you guys with my pattern paper. Although you will not be able to actually use a pattern paper when you are doing this, everything i'm doing on this pattern paper you have to do it on your actual fabric when you're trying to draft out your train so when you bring your fabric mostly um it's by 60 let's assume it's a duchess fabric you're using it's usually by 60 so the shorter part is 60 and then you have the longer part where you can have up to like 100 yards if you want so on the shorter part of the fabric which is this side of this pattern paper is where you get the length from your waist down to the floor and then on the other side which is longer is where you get the length of the train so for the waist area most times the train is usually just like halfway from one side of your waist to the other side so it doesn't go through the whole waist so you are going to be using half of your waist measurement okay so now let's assume you want this train to be pleated so that means you have to add more inches so for this small one i'm trying to do we are assuming that the actual waist measurement of this person is 16 inches so half of that is eight but because i want to be able to pleat this train i am going to be adding an extra 10 inches to that eight inches it depends on how full you want it to be and how much pleats you want to be able to do so now for the waist area i'm going to now be using 18 inches so half of the waist which is eight inches plus extra 10 inches for me to be able to make pleats i hope you guys understand so now i have divided 18 inches into two equal halves and that gave me nine so that nine inches now i'm going to try and use it to create like a curve just like the same way you would do when you are trying to cut out your flare you know how you are, you cut out your flare so i'm going to try and use that nine inches now to create my curve so divide the new measurement you want to use into two and then use it to create a curve so i normally just use my free hand to just like create a rough curve first and then i create a point there this might not be the professional way but that this is how i go about my own so i just create a point at where i had my first rough curve and i'll measure from the center to that point where i had the curve and then whatever measurement i get from there i'm going to continue to use it to create like a curve all the way around so what i had was about five inches so I'm just going to use it to create my curve all the way to the other end of the fabric. It's just the exact same way you would go about any flare if you're trying to cut it out. So from the point, from the center point, you're going to continue to measure until you get to the other side. So that we are done drawing out the waist area of the train. So now from this waist, we are going to determine the length of the train. So now from the waist, you're going to measure on the shorter part of your fabric you're going to measure the length from your waist down to the floor the train is usually very long so it's supposed to even be like longer than your normal waist to like the floor so you can even add some more inches to that so on the shorter part is where you take that measurement from your waist down to the floor okay now when you're true with that make a point there you're going to be doing this on your fabric okay waist to floor then on the longer part where you will have a lot of fabric to work with is where you determine how long you want your tail to be. So if you want the tail to be like six yards 
and follow you like that if you want it to be 100 yards and just be very long this is where you determine it because you will have a lot of fabric to work with on this other side so for me i just marked what i have here which was about 31 inches i'm just going to use it as the length of the train so i'm marking the 31 inches out a little bit so i marked 31 inches and i came out a little bit to mark the same 31 inches then now i'm marking 30 and a half so that it kind of have like a curve so you can see how it's curved out so i'll shift it again and mark 30 and a half okay or let's mark 30 inches now so i marked 30 inches so it was it started with 31 then i reduced it to 30 and a half and then lastly i used 30 so um, once you've come out a little bit like that you are just going to connect from this side to meet that point but it's going to be curved so from here i'm just going to mark the measurement i have here as well come out a little bit with it you can come out about 10 inches especially if you are working with a long fabric you can come out a little bit with it then you can now use your free hand to connect the rest so that way you are going to have one flare that is looking short one part of the flare looking short and then the other parts looking very long so you can see me trying to like take it down so you see what this side is looking like and then here so i'm going to connect from here down to the other side you can see i'm now using my free hand to try and make dots first to meet the other parts i'm sorry this was kind of like outside the camera but you guys are going to be seeing what i'm doing shortly so i'm just trying to connect with my free hand to the other side i totally didn't realize that this was out of the camera but see what i'm doing so connect it to meet the other point so at the end of the day you have one side looking short and then the other side looking very very long so i'll go ahead and cut out the waist and then of course cut out the remaining side of the flare so now i think you guys will be able to see the full thing clearly now so the flare is short on one side and then it goes down to be long on the other side so that's just basically it if you if you're someone who understands like really quickly you already understand what's going to happen here this is one half of the flare so it means that it's going to be something like this and you can tell how it's going to look so i'm going to go ahead and just place this on my fabric and cut it out so that i will demonstrate to you guys how to go about the sewing and how it will look when you're done i know this might look a little bit like confusing but it's something you have to just take your time and try to understand so what i have here is my fabric folded into four because i'm trying to make a small one so one side is long and then the other side is short now if you're doing this on your actual fabric and you're making it for an actual human being you cannot fold this fabric into four you are going to fold it just into two i'm going to show you guys how i was doing it on my actual fabric very shortly so that you understand if you fold it into four it will be too short you cannot even use it you'll not even be able to get the length from your waist to your knee okay so when you're on your actual fabric you're not going to be able to do that so you have to fold two fold two for the front part fold two for the back so all together you're going to have four pieces when you're done cutting and then you now have to start joining them together to give you the train but just for the process of how to go about it now i'm placing my pattern paper on the fabric that i folded you will need four because whatever fabric you have decided to use for the actual train is what you also use for the lining that's what i would advise because it actually comes out better if you use the actual fabric as the lining as well than to get another fabric for lining because it's going to show so it's just best you use the same fabric as the lining so now i'm just going to go ahead and cut this out so cutting out the waist you're cutting it on your actual fabric uh, when you draft out your pattern on the actual fabric make sure to remember to give allowances because you need allowance to join the waist and also to go about the end of the train so yeah i'm just going ahead to cut out mine like i said before for you to be able to get your lining and the actual fabric everything together you will need to fold your fabric into four so this was the actual process so this fabric here that i'm putting on the floor is folded into two this is just for the front i have already cut out the back with the exact same process so i folded the back into two as well and cut it out 
so now this is how you fold it into two you cannot fold your fabric into four like i said before so now i've already cut out the lining part which is what i'm now going to just place on this one and use to cut out um, the actual fabric so this is it the lining as you can see was quite different in color a little bit from the actual fabric but it really didn't show when i was done making it so yeah so i'm placing the lining on the actual fabric as you can see and you'll notice that i've already cut out the lining and that waist that you see there is definitely way bigger than my actual waist because i made it bigger um like i explained earlier because i wanted to be able to pleat the waist so now everything here that i have all together is four pieces two for the front that's um the the part you will be seeing and two for the inner part which is the lining so the shorter part where I started this cutting from is the measurement from my waist down to the floor. Okay, so now this area that I am on is the measurement from the waist down to the floor. Now the curve that I'm cutting out is like part of the curve that you saw me doing just now. But this is on a bigger scale. I am actually not fast forwarding this part because I want you guys to actually see what I'm doing and hopefully understand it. So I'm cutting out the curve. I'm just using the lining to just trace into the actual fabric now. So as you can see, I'm just like cutting out the, the, the train. And then the other side that I'm going towards, which is the longer part of the, of the length, is the length of my train. I hope that you guys understand. So this longer side that you're seeing here where my arrow is, the length of the train, that's going to be like the center back area of the train and then the other shorter part is the length from my waist to the floor so i actually really hope that you guys understand this cutting process at least like everything i'm doing here is seen so on the center back i'm actually going to ahead to trim the center back so this area that i'm trimming is the length of the t of the train like i said before this is the length of the train this is where you're going to see flowing behind me okay so yeah this is how to go about the cutting when you're done opening up every part you're going to notice that there are four pieces here four it's going to be four two for the front and two for the back so two and then this other two here for the back so once you're done cutting this out i told you guys earlier that if you want it to look full that you also have a layer of hard net which i've also folded into two here so yeah i placed it exactly on my um the train that i've already cut out earlier and i'm going to just go ahead and cut it out so i pin it in place so that it doesn't move so you can see what i'm doing here just going ahead to also cut it out this area that i'm on right now is the center back and it is where we have the length of the train we are going to have to join this center to be able to get the full train okay you will need an, an open space to be able to cut this house and you can see this room i'm actually using is a big room and you can see how long the train is like it's almost covering the whole room for you to know how much fabric i'm actually using here okay we are back to our table so now once you're done cutting it out like i've demonstrated just now you're going to go ahead and remove all the pins and everything this one now i don't have to join the center of these pieces because um I'm using a small fabric and I was able to just fold it into four. So this is what I have now. So you can already see if I fold the waist together and just hold it, you can already see how like the other side is longer. So this is what you will have. It's really very simple. So let me just go ahead and show you guys how to join the pieces together to get the train. So you're going to place the actual fabrics together, right sides facing each other. Then you are going to place your layer of hard net that you've cut out. Remember this one, I'm not using hard net for this particular one. So you have your layers of fabrics, then followed by the layer of hard net, and then the layer of crinoline, and then you have a layer of hem gum. So you're going to place everything together like this. You're going to start from the curve first, and just, you can actually pin this all the way around. If you're working on an actual fabric, it will be too much to pin down it will be too it's actually very stressful to work with so you're just going to take it to the sewing machine and start sewing so all your layers together and then head over to the sewing machine 
and just start stitching it down. When I was doing this on my sewing machine for the actual wedding dress, it was so much, it was so much fabric to work with that just sewing around the end, just the curved area of my train took almost like 30 minutes or even more because I know I was on that for a very long time and it was really frustrating. It's not something that you can actually rush. It is a lot of fabric that you'll be working with. So make sure all your layers are well arranged when you're stitching, when you're making your stitch all the way around. Your crinoline, your hard net, your fabric pieces, the two of them that you're working with, and then you just add um, the hem comb and just go ahead and stitch all the way around the curve first. So when you're done stitching around the curve, you should have something looking like this, okay? So now you open the whole train. It will not be as easy as this is. And then you're going to push the allowance that you have towards the other side where you have your crinoline and everything. So you're going to make a top stitch on that side. So after I was done making my top stitch, this is what it looks like. Now, this top stitch is going to be the hardest part of the making of this dress. It's going to be very hard because of the amount of fabric that you'll be working with. So, but this is what you will have after you are done making the top stitch. You can see what it looks like. So you can easily tell the front and the back now and you can see what I have. So now once you're through with this, the next thing you want to do is to go ahead and finish up this front part. So you will turn everything over to the wrong side again and then you're going to fold from the end to the top, from the top to the end, whichever one you want to and stitch this front part and do the same thing for the other side as well. Everything is stitched down now and the only part that is left on stitch is just the waist area. So this is the end stitch down, the front part stitch down. So I'm just going to go ahead and iron it out. So you need a steam iron and this is another process that is going to be very time consuming. You can iron, depending on how long your train is, you can iron this for like another 30 minutes and you just be on it ironing because it's very, very long. For me, it got to a point I just had to pause it for a while and get back to ironing later because it was just a lot to work with and I really, really hate working with so much fabric. So guys, after ironing it out, you're going to now try to get the center. Um, if you cut it out the way I demonstrated on my actual fabric, you're going to actually have a stitch, a joining at the center. So um, you don't even need to like find a way to get the center. But here, there was no joining in my center. So I just made a notch and I'm pleating my fabric now on the waist area. Remember we said we wanted it to be pleated around the waist? So this is your time to go about that. It depends on how many inches you have given to your train. So you are going to fold those inches in as pleats so that by the time you're done, you get back your waist measurements that you, you needed, okay? Remember the waist you are working with for this one was 16 inches and half of that is eight. So you need to pleat this to get that eight inches back. So if, for example, like the one I made for myself, my actual waist measurement is 24 and half of that is 12. So after I was done, I had to pleat the waist area back to give me that half of my measurement, which is 12. I really hope that everything I'm explaining is understandable for you guys because this is just a lot to explain. So, but anyways, now I've pleated this area and now I've measured it is enough for the waist that is supposed to be. So we are going to have to now like cover up the waist, the upper part, and that will basically be it. But I just wanted to show you guys what it's looking like because I felt like you didn't really see how the curves on the um, on the train was looking. So I had to just take the camera off. But anyways, let's continue. So you're going to cut out a piece of fabric that you're going to use to turn the waist. So I'm going to turn from the back towards the front. So let me just turn it over. And it's just the same way you will turn any other um, fabric you're trying to turn on the waist. Just go ahead and first of all, just pin it down first straight. Then when you're done, you're going to now use the excess fabric you have at the top to fold it in towards the front. That way you'll be able to have a very nice finishing. So guys, the last thing you're going to do after you're done is to get your hook. This is a small one. I would advise that you use a skirt hook instead of this small one when you're making yours. So the hook part, that's the bigger part. 
you're going to actually place it on the skirt you can have like about on the train you can have about three or four spots where you place it and then you're going to also place the other part of the hook on the dress so so that when you're when you put on your dress you can actually hook the train to the dress when you're done so guys that's all for this tutorial you can see the actual one on the other side the one i actually made for my wedding anyways i hope that you guys actually find this helpful thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one